right. Starting the stream right now. I'm gonna be pulling up the YouTube chat, so hopefully we will be good. Key phrase meaning hopefully. Do, do, do. We got our first question, number 11. Oh right, man, you kids are gonna get me so, so tired. All right, so let's take a look then at number 11 per Samantha's request. So on 11, we have those two semicircles, which if you think about it, this semicircle here forms a complete cylinder with the other part on the right side there. So what we're hypothetically doing is we're saying, okay, let's find the volume of one cylinder and subtract it from the volume of our prism. So just from the figure alone, we know that the distance all the way across here is 8, which means that our radius is going to be a length of 4. And then the height of the cylinder will be a height of 3. So the volume of our cylinder is going to be pi r squared h. So then we will substitute in 4 for the radius and the height for 3. So I believe that gives us 48 pi. Now the volume of our prism, well remember that it has a base length of 10, a base width of 8, and then of course we have our height of 3. So for the volume of your prism, you are going to have it as 10 times 8 times 3, which gives you 240. So now at this point, you're saying volume of the prism minus the volume of the cylinder. And since there's no pi in the prism, it's just going to be 240 minus 48 pi. And then of course we can't forget about our units. 
which I didn't give units, so that means we're still going to have to write the actual word units, or if you want abbreviated UN, that works too. Oh wait, we're dealing with volume, so that should be cute. So there you go. Any other questions, my little critters? Why is it 10 by 8 by 3? Good question, Jonah. So it is a rectangular prism. And rectangular prisms usually are very nice because all you have to do is length times width times height. And if you think about it, the base is just length times width. And if you think about the volume I've told you for prisms, base area times height, well, that would be the same thing as 80 times 3. So that's another way of looking at it. You're still multiplying all three numbers anyways. Ugh. I got so many messages from you all. Oh my goodness. Blake. Yes, we can do number four, Blake. Five hundred questions and not enough time to answer all of them. Uh, the formulas, Jonah, are going to be the ones that you did from your quiz that you had yesterday. So literally I'm going to hand out your test and then I'm going to hand out your formula sheet and then we're good to go. Uh, Blake, you wanted number four, let's do that. Okay, so we need the lateral surface and area, so wow, move it. Lateral area, surface area, and volume for your pyramid here, Blake. So before I do any work in terms of your formulas, let's go ahead and write down the things we need. We need our perimeter first, which since it is a square pyramid, that means all four of those bottom parts are 24 feet long. So there are four sides, 24 each, which gives you 96. The other thing you also need is the base area. And since the base is a square, the area for that will be 24 times 24 which is going to be something close to 576. Oh, hey, look at that, 576. <laughs> I'm tired, guys. All right, so now if we go straight to the surface area and lateral area, we can go ahead and find those right away. Lateral area. is equal to one half the perimeter times the slant height. Can I just write it down on my paper? Uh, no, because it's going to already be the ones that you wrote. So make sure you have the correct ones before you go into your test. Um, we're going to have one half of 96 times our slant height, which if you look at the picture, the slant height is going from the vertex to the middle of your side. So that right there is our 14. That's the slant. So then all you do is multiply those numbers straight through. And we have our 672.
And then of course, don't forget the units, feet squared. Surface area, we know it's the lateral area plus one base. There aren't two bases in this, there's only one bottom part, and that's the bottom of your pyramid. So that's going to be your 672 plus the 576 we calculated. So that gives you your 1248. Um, for this one, Kosher, there's no circle, so there shouldn't be any pi units on this one. The only time you write pi is when there are circles involved. So a cylinder and a cone will be shapes where you have pi, as well as a sphere. I almost forgot about that. So now Blake, to finish off this problem, my volume equals base area times the height. Well, we have the base area, but we don't have the actual height of our pyramid. So what we got to do is we got to figure it out. If I draw a line straight from the vertex to the middle of the base, that right there is my height. Well, I can set up a right triangle here, and this length right here, because the pyramid is a square, that's going to be half of the side length from here. So that's going to actually be a 12. So to set up that triangle for the height, you're going to set up the Pythagorean theorem. So we will say that 12 squared plus h squared equals 14 squared. I can math. It's only been a long day, guys. No biggie. 196. Oh, duh. 52. <laughs> okay. So we have our 52. When you take the square root of that, h will equal... Well, 52, if you remember, breaks down into 4 times 13. Since 4 is a perfect square, we can instantly take the square root of 4. That'll give us 2. The 13 is all by its lonesome self, so it stays inside. So that is our height. So we can go ahead and do 576 times 2 red 13. So then that would give you 714. 10, 11. So feet cubed. Um, I'll double check that. I don't know why I'm doubting myself. Yep, 11.52. So there you go. Hopefully that was helpful to you, Mr. Blake. Um, Liberty, yes, we can do number 13 why is it two radical 13 instead of just 13 okay so right here Blake we have the 52 that I broke down well, technically that was under the radical right here. So what I'm saying then is that the square root of 52 is equal to the square root of four times 13. Well, one thing you can do, you can go ahead and split up the radicals. And you would actually know that the square root of 4 is 2, and then the rad 13 stays there. They're 
you don't remove it. It doesn't just become 13. Oh, Alyssa, you're right. Yeah, see, this is why we're doing this, guys. Yeah, I forgot to take one third of that. The volume of a pyramid is one third base area times height. So watch this. I'm gonna fix all my work. Or try to, at least. Aw, oh, yeah, it worked. Yeah, I don't know why I dropped the radical, guys. Like I said, I'm really tired. Really tired. Okay, so then 1152 divided by 3. 384, yay! 384, red 13. Hopefully that's uh, better. That looks like a B. Okay, so let me see here. Yeah, two radical 13, answered that. Jonah, you figured out your problem. I did not mean to remove the radical. Sorry, Kosher. Uh, and Alyssa coming in clutch, saving us. Yes, we do divide by three. I messed up. <sighs> and I've still got a lot of work to do today, guys. <laughs> On the bright side, how do you multiply without the radical? Um, what you're going to want to do, Jonah, is ignore the radical on your calculator. Just type in 576 times 2 divided by 3, and then write your square root of 13 afterwards. Yes, Adam, we can do number 3. I'm going to try to make sure I didn't leave any loose ends on this one. Nope, we're good. We are G double O D. Okay. So yes, let's take a look at number three atom. I'll leave that up real quick and then go. Yay! Hexagonal prism. We have not left the world of finding area of hexagons. The moment you see that you should be thinking one half AP. Because half of you are in AP classes or something. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. So we're going to need that length here. So that apothem, if I create the right triangle for it, and I'm going to in class in the morning, I will be in class hopefully as early as 745, as long as I can get enough sleep tonight. Otherwise, I will be very groggy and annoyed. Hopefully not groggy. Um, so if you remember, Adam, this type of triangle here is a 30, 60, 90. And this will happen every time you do the hexagon. So the rule for going from the short leg to the long leg is you multiply the side by, th by radical 3. So first things first, our perimeter, there are six sides and each side length is six. So that gives you 36. Yeah, we don't need the unit there. The base area, that's our one half AP. And we already have the perimeter for it. So we're gonna say one half of three rad three times 36 which is going to give us our 54 rad 3. At this point, I don't think we need to do any other work. So we're just going to jump straight to it. This is a prism. So we are going to use the prism formulas. So our lateral area equals perimeter times the height. So the perimeter of 36 times the height. Now the height is not the height of the face, it's the height of your solid. Or another way of thinking of it as the distance between your two bases. There's my first base, there's my second base. How far apart are they from each other? They're 15 meters apart. Uh, 
I can't read. I'm getting old, guys. 540. So 540 meters squared. Surface area. We know that that's lateral area plus the area of two of our bases. We did the work for the bases. That's 54 rad 3. So that will be 540 plus 2 times 54 rad 3. I can't actually add these two numbers together because the 540 doesn't have a radical 3, the 108 does, so I simply leave it as this, meters squared. And then volume, base area times the height, it is a prism. I messed it up earlier for the pyramid, but I'm not going to again. 54 rad 3 times the height of the prism, which is 15. So that gives me 810. <laughs> Alyssa doesn't need help on number two anymore, guys. She's a genius. All right. So there's the work. What did you guys have for dinner? That could be a discussion question if you guys want. I had this really awesome pizza mac and cheese that Trader Joe's sells. And then with that, I had some, uh, some uh, of that holiday ham. My uh, landlord and his girlfriend made it. And there were a bunch left over. So I got to eat that too. Oh, Alyssa, I'm so jealous. I almost got sushi, but I was like, I don't have any money. I have to eat what I have in the house. Sushi's good. So good. Any other questions? My little critters. I'm wondering, did I answer? So, oh, Liberty. Oh my gosh, she's going to hate me. We forgot to do number 13, guys. We got to go back and do 13. Ugh. Ooh, chili dogs are good. Also, you spelled chili wrong, Jonah. Come on, man. Yeah, let's go ahead and do 13, y'all, because I forgot that's what Liberty asked for. Oh, you made them yourself? What kind of cheese? Oh, no, you didn't even say chili cheese dogs. Peanut butter jelly. Ain't nothing wrong with a good peanut butter jelly. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, Adam, I will do number 10 after I do 13 because I failed Liberty at that. So first off, our volume of a sphere formula. Is 4 thirds pi r cubed, or if you want to write this as 4 pi r cubed over 3, you can do it that way too. Barbecue chicken with ice cream. Interesting. I'm not sure how that would settle in my stomach. Ooh, cheddar cheese. So he, you did make chili cheese dog. That's awesome. All right, back to the math. So we're going to go ahead and get r cubed by itself by dividing both sides by 4 pi. So r cubed is going to equal, what is that, 4, 8, 12. I think that's 343 because math, you know. So r cubed equals 343. So when you take the cube root, r is going to equal 7. But we're not done there yet, and I need to fix that on the key. Will questions on the test be like 14 through 16? Yes, there will literally be three questions almost exactly as 14, 15, and 16. Uh, let me 
let's see here. Uh, yes, so now we have to plug it back into surface area. So the surface area, if you all recall, 4 pi r squared. Oh, Jonah, they're not that bad. They're fine, I promise you. Those are easy points if you follow the directions. So 4 pi 7 squared. So 49 times 4, 196 pi. And then, of course, it's surface area for that feet squared. Can I do 14, 15, and 16? Yes, I can. And before we do those, I'm going to refresh you all on the things we need and talk about our levels. I like to think of them as levels, like little tiers. So, Liberty, I apologize if I failed you. Did this help you out with number 13? Buffering. There shouldn't be any buffering. Everything's working on my end. Everything here is running smooth. Yay, Liberty's not mad at me anymore. Yeah, Matthew, I don't think anything's buffering. How about, Jonah, I do all three of them just for you? I will do that. So right off to the side real quick, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the things you need to know for 14, 15, and 16. So first off, you all have to remember that you need to be able to distinguish the difference between a similarity ratio, an area ratio, and let's write out the word, and a volume ratio. You have to know what all three of them are. If I give you one ratio, you have to be able to find the other. Ugh. I'm going to chill back a bit. So you have to be able to know how to find any one of them. So remember that similarity ratio is your base level. That's always going to be A to B. Your area ratio, if you think about your units for area, your area is always something like feet squared or meters squared, whatever it is. So therefore, your area ratio is going to be A squared, B squared. So that means if I want to find my similarity ratio and I'm given the area ratio, I need to take the square root. So I would need to take the square root of whatever numbers I have. Now, if I'm given a volume ratio, that would be something like A cubed, B cubed. Well, how am I going to remember that? It's the same reasoning as we had for the area. Your volume is written as cubed units or cubed feet or cubed meters, whatever it is. So because it's cubed, your volume ratio is also going to be cubed. Well, by that same measure, if I want to find my similarity ratio, what I need to do is take the cube root of those numbers. But remember that before you can do that, you should always simplify your ratio to its smallest fr uh, form, and then the numbers will work out nicely. I'm not going to give you something that's going to have decimals. It's going to always work out nice for you. So let's go ahead and actually do this. I've given you the similarity ratio, so that means that 5 is A and B is 7. Can I give you an example of one of these? If you're talking about the ratios, yes, I'm about to do them right now, if that's what you're asking, Kosher. So it says here, find the ratio of their surface area. So that key phrase is area. So my area ratio, A squared, B squared, which is 5 squared to 7 squared. And at this point, you're just going to go ahead and say 25 to 49. That is literally all you're going to do. That will be an easy two points on your test. 
To get the other two points, you got to find for me the volume ratio, which is going to be A cubed to B cubed. Is this the review or something? Yes, Anthony, this is the review. So this will be 5 cubed to 7 cubed. So then right here we have 125 to 343. So this is our volume ratio. A golf match. Oh, shut up, Matthew. Um, so Kosher, I think I understood what your question actually was. Let me give you all some examples of Mate. Oh my gosh. No internet fighting, you trolls. Okay. So let's say, Kosher, that I give you an area ratio of, let's say, 50 to. Oh my gosh, why can't I math? 98. Let's just say 50 to 98. So if I give you the area ratio. Remember first that you have to reduce this. So I know I can divide these by 2. So that'll give me 25 to 49. Well, my similarity ratio is going to be me taking the square root of 25 and the square root of 49. So then that would give us 5 to 7. So you don't take the root of anything unless you want sort of liberty. So I was given the area ratio. If I'm asking you to find the similarity ratio, that's when I use the radical. In the case of area, you take the square root. In the case of volume, you'll take a different root. So let's say for volume, I have something like 8 to 27. Now, at this point, I can't simplify it. So I immediately say, OK, I'm going to go straight to my similarity ratio. So that would mean I take the cube root of 8 and the cube root of 27. Well, the cube root of 8 is going to be 2. Wow, I can write 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So this is my similarity ratio from the volume ratio. This is my similarity ratio from the area ratio. From there, that's when I've shown you guys, hey, we can go ahead and take these values and make the new ratios. So I like to think of them as little levels. I need to get to the first floor before I go to any other floors. I need to get to the similarity ratio before I can create any other ratios. So finishing up 15 and 16, let's actually do 15 first. I'll leave 16 to you guys for a little bit. We'll answer Blake's question of number 10. Yes, I can read number 10. And then we may come back to those. So right now I've given you volume of 64 to 1,000. Now if you actually recognize these numbers, you will notice that, oh, well, I know the cube root of 64. My similarity ratio for volume, I'm going to take the cube root. And for both of these, you are going to get 4 and 10. But also notice that the 4 and 10 does reduce. It can reduce further to 2 to 5. If you choose to reduce the numbers first and then take their cube roots, it'll work out either way. So it's not going to break anything. It'll work out fine. So that's my similarity ratio. That's all step one. Step two for this problem, 
we need to relate the surface area next. So surface area means, oh, take your similarity ratio and find the area ratio. Well, that's going to be 2 squared to 5 squared. Bam, area ratio, step two done. Step three, we create our proportion. So those numbers here are going to become your denominators, four and 25. Now in the problem, I tell you the surface area of the smaller period, the smaller pyramid is 112. Well, since it is a smaller pyramid, that's going to go over the smaller fraction. So that's going to be your 112. We don't know the larger one because we're trying to solve for it. So we're going to call that X. And from here, you're just going to cross multiply and solve. <laughs> I'm so tired, guys. I still have work to do. 2,800. Divide those sides by 4. Now, this part is crucial. You have to remember, what were you trying to solve for? We were solving for surface area. So that means your surface area units are going to be squared. No, Jonah, bad child. Gosh, kids these days. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out, Jonah and anyone else that needed these once there will be three questions there will be one that's exactly like 14 one that's exactly like either 15 or 16 and then there will be one that kind of looks like what we were showing you here no i don't need caffeine no because it's already too late and yeah all right so blake i think it was blake or adam can't remember yeah, Blake, we're going to go ahead and do number 10 next. So right here, we got our weird solid here. Now, probably the easiest way of approaching this is saying, well, let's cut this figure into two parts I do know. Boom, big reveal. You have this solid here. And then you've got this solid here. Now, one thing to note is that this, can I do seven while you're gone? Sure. But you gotta make sure you come back and let me know when you're back, Jonah. Don't go off and play Fortnite. Um, Blake, this 15 here corresponds with this length of 15 over here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the volumes of these two prisms. Let's say this is solid one and solid two. For solid one, the volume for that, if we want to go with base area times height, we have to first figure out the length of the bottom side of the yellow part, this part here. Well, this 4 up here corresponds with this length of 4. Since the total length is 13 and the smaller chunk is 4, I can find the remaining part by doing the total of 13 minus the part of the 4. So that should give me a solid 9. So for that solid, we're going to go ahead and do 9 times 15 times 3. What's up, Brayden? 
I don't think I've done number eight yet. I'll double check though. I also have an email that someone else sent. Two slant heights. No, Liberty, there will not be t a question on the test where that involves two slant heights. I'll try to multitask while we're doing this. Solid two is going to be four times 15 times 10. Oh, sure. Everyone needs help with geometry. No, I came up with a different bonus question. It's going to be a beautiful one. At least, I think so. Um, so back to the calculations, because I can't math right now. The first solid gives you 405. The second solid gives you 600. So then when you add those two, you get your 1,005 units cubed. Yeah, no, the, the problem with doing a double slant height is because the base is rectangular. So that would be torching you guys. And yes, it is extra credit, but I want to give you something that you can at least somewhat know how to do. That one was a little harder. I think only like five people overall might have gotten those questions. So, you know, might not exactly have been fair. I reassessed my teaching styles. He claims it's easy. However, it is not as easy as you say it is. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Liberty. Okay, so Jonah wants us to do seven while he's gone. Well, he's going to be gone, so I don't want to help him. Brayden wanted to do number eight, I believe. I'm going to make sure I can find it. Yeah, all right, so let's take a look at number eight. All right. Surface area and volume, this one's a fun one. Let's talk about the actual surface. And I don't have my solids here with me like the ones I showed you in class. But there is something to note that you should be able to see here. From this picture, if you think about surface as something you can actually touch, we can't actually touch this top of the cylinder or if you want to think of it as the flat side of the hemisphere. We can't touch those. Thankfully for the sphere, we only have to look at half of its surface area and half of its volume. But for the cylinder, we have to acknowledge that we're missing a top. We have only one bottom. So what that means is we're going to say, hey, let's look at the lateral area. And then let's add on to it its base which thankfully we all actually know how to find the base area. It's the area of a circle. So that's going to be pi times four squared, which is 16 pi. Now in your cylinder, the radius is four. I can transfer that radius up to here. So then that means the radius for my sphere is also four. So bear with me because we're going to do a little bit of work and we're going to try to organize it to the best of our ability. So if I go ahead and say for my sphere, let's look at its surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. Uh, 
Matthew, I don't know where you're getting the one half base area times height. Yeah, I don't know where you're getting the one half, dude. There's no one half for this. This is a cylinder in a sphere. For the sphere, you just have your four pi r squared. So that's four pi, four squared. So 16 times four. What triangle are you talking about? There's no triangle inside of that shape at all. Oh, you mean for the slant? Okay, no one cares about that right now, Mateo. Um, so right here, you're gonna have 64 pi. But remember, we need half the sphere. So that's half the surface area. So that's going to be 32 pi. I need to hold on to that answer. For my cylinder, For my cylinder, we have the lateral area, which is 2 pi rh. So 2 pi times 4 times 10. So that'll give us 80 pi. So for my total surface area, that's going to be our 32 pi plus 80 pi plus the area of our base, which is 16 pi. Not the prettiest. Whatever. Um, so then that will yield you, I can totally math, that's 48, 128 pi. And then I believe our units are meters. Yep. So that'll be meters squared. Now looking at volume, the volume of a sphere And let's use purple. 4 pi r cubed over 3. So that's going to be 4 pi. Um, what can I bring right now? 4 cubed all over 3. So doing your calculations, 4, 16, 64, 256 pi over 3, but that's the entire sphere. We need half of that. So if we take half of your volume, that's the same thing as just taking half of the numerator. That's going to give us 128 pi over 3. Now for the cylinder, we still have our volume for that, which is pi r squared h, so pi times 4 squared times 10, so that'll give us 160 pi. Now this is going back to what you did back when you guys were working with adding two fractions together. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but what you're doing is you're saying 128 over 3 plus 160. And in order to combine those properly, you have to remember, hey, I have a fraction over 1. So if you multiply top and bottom by 3, so that'll give you 480 over 3 for the 160. That'll give you 128 over 3 and you just add them straight across. So that'll give you 608 over 3. Don't forget your pi. Boom. And then big reveal, meters cubed. So I don't anticipate this problem will be as difficult on the test, 
but definitely make sure that if you have the opportunity to write it as a um, improper fraction, you should write it as an improper fraction. I believe I do give you a question like this. Literally, your test is almost exactly like this, almost verbatim for a question. There's just like maybe two questions that are slightly different, but other than that, everything's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Poor Liberty. Oh no. Um, let me actually write that work over here. Also, by the way, I want to give a shout out to my boy Brayden for making the banner art on my channel. He's my boy. Um, Blake, we will have a total of 15 questions. The last three will look almost exactly like the last three questions on your review. And there will be a bonus question. So a total of 16 questions, but only 15 graded questions. Study guide was hard. Yeah, I mean, I always try to make the study guide a little harder so that the test won't be as difficult. And for the most part, it's on about par. Make sure you get some sleep. Yeah, Lord knows I need it. I still have to pick up my girlfriend from class, so yay. Still tired. All right, so really quick, Adam, I promised Jonah, I think it was, that I would do number seven. I'll do seven really quick, and then I'll go right back to number five, if that's okay with you, Adam. So really quick on this one, it's again the same idea for the surface area. I only need the lateral area of my pyramid. For my prism, I only need the lateral area plus one of your bases, which thankfully we can do the base area right away. So that's going to be your six times six. Boom, big reveal. Pyramid, or pyramid, wow. Try this again, Mr. T. The perimeter of both your pyramid and your prism are both squares. So we can just do six times four. So let's jump right to it. Let's go ahead and do that lateral area of our pyramid. Oh wait, no, I can't do it yet. We need our, we need our slant height. I don't have it yet. So let's see here. I can draw that, which if I remember, that length of six gets cut in half to three. There's my slant height here. Ooh, I think if memory serves me correct, we have a Pythagorean triple. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. So three squared plus four squared equals slant squared. Hopefully you guys remember that it's five. Sorry. If you don't remember that, that's okay. Nine plus 16, 25 equals the slant. So then the slant is five. So let's get right to it. Lateral area equals one half perimeter times the slant height. So one half of 24 times five, which I believe is 48, me thinks. Oh wow, way off. Really? Yep, really. I'm tired, y'all. Cool. If we know the Pythagorean triple, can we just write it in Nasha work? The only work I want you to show me 
liberty is write Pythagorean triple. That's literally all I want you to write. Or set up the theorem and then go straight to here. That I'm okay with too. So lateral area is 60 for the pyramid. I should probably label my work. Yeah, let's move that down here. Here's my pyramid. And then we have our prism. And for this lateral area, that's just the perimeter times the height. So 24 times 6. So gosh, that's 144. And then, of course, our total surface area is going to be our 60 plus 144 plus the area of our one base, which we said was 36. Uh, 96 plus 144. So 240. Units squared. Now the volume of these are much easier. I already gave you the height of the pyramid. So that's going to be your one third base area times the height. So one third of 36 times four. Now, just to clarify, remember the height of your pyramid is always the distance from the vertex straight up to the middle of the base. So that's 48. Our volume of our prism, base area times height. So that's 36 times 6. Yeah. So that's 216. So then our total volume. Is going to be 48 plus 216. So 264 units cubed. So I think what I'll do is I'll answer number five, Adam, and then I might answer one or two more questions and then I got to get going because I don't want my girlfriend to hate me for leaving her behind at class, but oh well, she'll be fine. Okay, so Adam, your base in this picture, though it might be a little hard to see, is this triangle here. So for the triangle you want to remember okay to find the area of a triangle I'm gonna do one half base times height. Well the bottom here is six. I'm missing Riverdale. Have fun Mateo. Um, so right here is my height which I didn't give it to you but notice that this is an isosceles triangle. So the isosceles triangle allows you to say, hey, I can create the altitude, which is my height, and that'll split each of these into two equal parts. So they are both three and three. So then again, just like what Liberty was saying, if you recognize the triple, you can go ahead and just write it. Now, I don't want you to make the, this mistake, Adam. I don't want you to put in your triangle that it's one half of three times four. Okay, because remember the base of your triangle is the entire length across. 
So you're going to be doing 1 half of 6 times 4, which will give you 12. That's your base area. The only other thing we need, because I gave you all the other information, is that the per uh, perimeter is 5 plus 5 plus 6, which is 16. So for lateral area, that's going to be your 1 half perimeter times the slant height, which is 1 half of 16 times 9. So that it'll give you 72. Did I give units in this? No. Units squared. For your surface area, we're going to go ahead and say lateral area plus the area of your base. So that'll be 72 plus what we found in our base over here, which is the 12. So that'll give us 84. Volume will be nice and easy for us because that's one third the base area times the height. So one third of 12 times 8. So that'll give us 48 units cubed. So hopefully, Adam, that helped out. Uh, yeah. Anytime, Blake. Got your back. Um, Samantha, yes, we will do number 12 next. Although, why do I feel like we already did number 12? I could be wrong. Hmm. Hmm. I apologize if that broke your ears on the microphone. So on number 12, this is almost exactly the same as what we did on our quiz, as well as on the homework. So here we go. We have a cone, so we need to write down the formula for volume. So let's say that we just start off with the volume formula. One third pi r squared times the height. We know that our volume is 480 pi, and that's equal to one third pi r squared, and they give us the height, the height is 10. Now at this point, there's no way for me to really simplify the 1 third and 10. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3, because then that'll get rid of my 1 third and it'll clean up the equation nicely. I can move the 10 in front. So that'll give me, oh my gosh, I can math. Uh, 0, 4, uh, 1,440 pi equal to 10 pi r squared. From here, we can divide out on both sides the 10 pi. And so the pi's cancel out here and here. The tens cancel out here, which allow me to eliminate those zeros here. So 144 is equal to r squared. Back to algebra land, take that square root of both sides. So r is going to equal 12. Find the length of the radius, boom, T r is 12 centimeters. And so that's how we do number 12. Ugh. So tired. I 
could only imagine that a lot of you will be bugging me during finals week, which I don't mind, but ugh, I'm gonna be so tired. You're welcome, Sam. I've got time for maybe two more questions, y'all. If any of you guys have any more. Got my friends asking me if I'm still alive. Gotta at least let them know I'm somewhat. I am a zombie. <laughs> During finals, maybe. I mean, we do have minimum days on those days. So I could potentially do them earlier in the day. You never know. Number 11? Yes. Let's go ahead and do number 11, Adam. And 16. Yes, Kasher, we could do 11 and 16. It would help if... Wait. I already did 11, Adam. Oh, you might have came in late. That's why. So, Adam, on 11, real quick, little recap. I took the cylinder that was on the right side, the missing gap, and I moved it over to sh show that the entire shape was one cylinder. So I'm going to take the volume of the entire prism and I'm going to subtract from it the volume of the cylinder. So the cylinder we know is pi r squared h. Since my length across the prism is a length of four, or sorry, is an eight, that means the radius is four. And the height is that three, which I've highlighted green over there. I don't know why I said green, highlighted yellow. So pi r squared h gives us 48 pi. The prism, since it's rectangular, it's just length times width times height for my volume. So just 10 times eight times three, which is 240. So then my remaining volume is 240 minus 48 pi. And if you want, Adam, I believe I did this problem at the very beginning of the video. If you want to go back to the beginning after this video ends and you can rewatch it, then you can get a fresh take on it. Um, Kosher, let's take a look at 16, which I believe is the last in our little mini series of ratios and surface areas and whatnot. So right here we have area ratios, 54 to 96. Now before I go too much further, and try to take any square roots here, I'm gonna wanna reduce this. So the 54 and 96 are both even, so I can divide them by two, which will give me 27. And I can totally math, 48. But now at this point I'm thinking, oh no, I, I can't divide it any further. Well. 3 can also go into those. So let's divide them both by 3. And so what that'll give us now is that'll actually give us 9 to 16. So 9 and 16 are perfect squares. And again, I'm looking with areas. So that means my similarity ratio is going to be the square root of 9 to the square root of 16. And that's going to give me 3 to 4. Now I'm trying to compare the volumes now. Volume of the larger cylinder is 512. Um, no, you will not get marked down if you don't simplify all the way. But I will tell you this much liberty, if you don't simplify your 27 and 48, and you try to take the square root, you are going to get a decimal, so that's not going to help you. Uh, back to the thing, if we have the volume we're trying to compare, we're going to need the volume ratio. 
So volume, if you recall, is a cubed. I don't know why I put that there. A cubed to B cubed. So that means you're going to do 3 cubed to 4 cubed. So that's 27 to 64. <laughs> You'll be fine, Liberty, I promise. Just simplify it all the way. Um, so then what we're going to do, Kosher, is we're going to take these numbers here and we're going to write them as the denominators of our fraction. So from the fraction here, we know that we need our numerator. Well, the larger cylinder is 512. That's going to go over the large fraction. What is the volume of the smaller cylinder? That's what I'm trying to find. So that's going to have an X. We're going to go back to all the fun jazz we had with our cross multiplying. So 64 equals. <laughs> so tired. 27 times 12. 13, 824. I should probably write 64x. That'd be good. Then from here, divide both sides by 64. Boom. Big reveal. x equals 215. I was like, what? Kosher, my boy, you beat me to the punchline, 216. Yeah, but wait, Kosher, and hopefully you get this on time, what are my units going to be? Because that's going to be one point. Got to make sure you know it. I'll be waiting. Because, of course, there's that delay. I see the message on time, but then my recording doesn't get to you on time. What are the units, Kosher? Cubed. Yeah! The units are cubed, so therefore we are going to say feet cubed. If you're always curious as to where... Yeah, he wrote it. Yeah, it's always going to be in the problem. Alright. Eh, maybe I can give you guys time for one more. Let me make sure. We already did 11 for Adam. We did 16 for Kosher. Liberty probably has a couple of complaints or questions. Did we almost do the entire review? Holy cow, we did. We were literally only missing one, two, three problems, four problems. Not bad. It almost took me two hours to do this entire thing by myself. I think I was just not motivated. I had you guys here, so I was a little more motivated. Number six. All right, Liberty, let's go ahead and jump to number six. All right. So we know that this is six and two. I could probably knock out both. So right here, this 24 is the entire distance across. That's also our diameter. So we know then that my radius is going to be 12. Before I go too much further, I would like to point out that I did not give you the height. The only thing I gave you was the slant height. So what we're going to want to do is set up a Pythagorean theorem. Little right triangle scenario here. So we could say 12 H 20. Now this is also a Pythagorean triple, but if you don't recognize it right away, don't even worry. So 
So there's my height of 16. So I think I have everything I need to go. Lateral area, pi r slant height. So pi times 12 times 20, 240 pi. I didn't write any units, so units squared. In my surface area, we're saying lateral area plus pi r squared. So that's going to be 240 pi plus pi times 12 squared. So that gives us 384 pi. Volume is one third pi r squared h. Yeah, I'll leave that there for y'all. So one third pi twelve squared times sixteen. Uh, let's see here. That is the same thing as so seven sixty-eight, but then I have to divide it by three. So 256, 256 pi units cubed. Liberty, was that helpful to you? Hopefully it was. All out of water. Got my West Ranch cup right there. They gave me one last year for my birthday and they gave me another one this year. So I keep one at school and I have one at home now. All right, Adam, let's answer number two so that I can end the session tonight because I'm very tired. So on number two, our base is a triangle. I have two of its sides labeled and I have this right angle here. That right angle can be transferred down here and so can the 12. So my first approach should be finding that missing side. So x squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. Uh, okay. And so x squared plus 144 equals 225 squared equals 81. So x equals 9. So that length there is a length of 9. So for my perimeter, we're going to have 9 plus 12 plus 15, which is going to be a length of 36. The base area, well, it's a triangle, but how am I going to find the base and height of the triangle? Well, the key thing to remember, Adam, is when you see a right angle, the two sides that make the right angle, because they create your perpendicular, oops, my bad there, because they create the perpendicular, you always want to remember that this bottom will always be your base and this here will always be your height. So I'm looking for that right angle to help me find the base and height. So one half of nine times 12, which should give me a 54. There we go. 
So we have base area, we have perimeter. I think we have everything. So my lateral area, since this is a prism, perimeter times the height. So that's going to be 36 times the height of our solid, which is 14. So 504, which all of you should be looking into getting is a 504 plan. Or am I thinking of a 401k? 401k, that's what I was thinking. Lateral area, surface area, there we go. Lateral area plus two base areas. Got to add those up. So 504 plus two times our 54. So that'll get us 612 inches squared. We have surface area, lateral area, volume. So volume is going to be our base area times the height. So that's going to be your 54 times 14 which I believe this one came out to a four digit answer. No, it was close though, 756. And then of course, don't forget your units are inches cubed. And there you have it. That is our lateral area, surface area, and volume of your prism. Like I said, your test is going to look awfully similar to this. Almost exactly the same layout. There will be lines for you to write out your answers. Um, yeah, just make sure you guys are well aware of your formulas. Even though I'm giving you your formula sheet back, not everyone got perfects on them. So you want to make sure to tweak those. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So I wish you all a good night. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can, but the test is going to take a while. So I think I might answer one or two questions and then we'll just go straight to the test. All right. Good night, y'all. You guys are awesome. And let me know. No, Sam, you're not allowed to cry. No, bad. Oh my gosh, children. <sighs> All right, anyways, take care. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Press the stop button. There we go.